What's up, man? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the Isle of Man. And we came over here on a boat a few days ago on a really pleasant little like voyage across mm -hmm. the sea that was about four hours, but it was quite relaxing. It's a really nice Was ferry. it a four hour tour? Yeah, it was a four hour tour, but nothing sank and we didn't get stuck. Well, we are stuck on an island at the moment. Yeah. I don't know how long, it, we, could, we could be here forever, but True. we're planned to only be here for about two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it has so far been a pretty pleasant little place. It's very windy here. Yeah. But that's the time of year it is, and that's just how it'd be. Um, but what the Isle of Man is famous for is that it is near the, it's like directly between the UK, Ireland, and Scotland. And apparently, dude, I heard that you can see all, all four, all three of those countries. From the mountain? From the mountain. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if it's, if, if we brave the wind on the top of the mountain at some point, maybe we'll get to see that. And the other thing that the island is famous for is that they have the Isle of Man TT motorcycle race here. And we're not going to be here for that but it's a huge deal and we've seen a documentary about it actually in the past and it looks like insane Intense like fun. people die like on this thing like i don't know if it's every year but more than never like motorcycle racers die i've, I've heard that at least th that that they have a death a year at least yeah, yeah. it's in it, i mean they're like going 200 miles an hour with these little villages and stuff and we plan to drive around that track just to check that out and get an yeah. idea of what that looks might like might happen today might happen today and uh the other thing that's happened today is that we have come out and rented a car so that we can explore and they do have an awesome transportation system here but you just can't beat a car because otherwise we wouldn't be stopped right where we're standing and doing seeing what we're doing view. right now we'd and seeing be on this a view. bus waiting yeah. for someone to stop looking out the window being like wow what a nice view so we've rented a car just for a couple days to just like scoot around and like you know see what the island's got the offer yeah <laughs> and this is the start of that so we're gonna go get in the car and find some fun we've driven about 10 minutes through what's a fairly amazing looking setting kind of narrow like countryside road and you get curved back and forth through these hills and stuff and you're just cruising through these little tiny villages that have got like it's seemingly nothing i guess people just live in them but there's no shopping or anything going on in these little villages and we've come out to the sea and that doesn't take long from basically any point on the island because we just eyeballed it on google maps it's like 10 miles across maybe less than that and maybe 20 or 30 miles north to south so it's not a huge island at all but we were driving down the road and we came across the structure that's behind us and it is just like an old 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 like fort or something that sits up on the hill that overlooks the sea and it's here because the island has been inhabited for a very 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 long time and it's gone back and forth and fought over between different people because its location being central to those different countries and um there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of history and stuff that's going on and oh katie's excited because there's an airplane going oh off right God, now Sean! It is so cool. Oh, sorry, my bad. Can you see it, do you think? Yeah. Oh my god, that was so cool. <laughs> well, the reason I was I was holding on to the pan is because we were like, wow, look at this, like, look at this broken down thing. And then we drove around the corner and this thing popped up. <laughs> and what is that? It's like a castle or something. What did you say it looked like? It's a high school for wizards. <laughs> Absolutely, I think you nailed it. <laughs> Yesterday we spent some time at the Manx Museum and one of the things that we watched in a video was actually about the location that we're standing at right now. When I saw it on this side of the road, I was like, I've seen that before. It turns out that this is the execution point of William Christian and William Christian was against the people who ruled the Isle of Man for an, a pretty long time called the Derby family. And the Derby family were loyal to the throne and during one ruler's time, he decided that he was gonna change a lot of laws that were going on like especially property laws and people were really upset about that so William Christian stood up against that and he got knocked down and here is the site of his execution where they shot him to death two quick tidbits Katie used the word Manx and I think that might be confusing to some people because what's Manx but that's what the people on the island of man are referred to so that is like their nomenclature and they use that word for things from the island as well like Manx food or whatever 
and it's spelled M-A-N-X. And a lot of people will be familiar with that word from the cats which are apparently from here as well, Manx cats, the ones with the little nubby tails, or in some cases, no tails. The other thing of note is it is damn windy here. It is so windy that I, I make these shots with the camera where I'm trying to pan like smoothly that I can overlay things so that people have like an idea of what it is we're looking at. And it is difficult to make those shots just because the wind is blowing my body around so much I can't hold my camera steady. <laughs> What? Just that little lighthouse on the coast and sun on the water. Quick editor's note, at the time we didn't realize this, but apparently that's Jeremy Clarkson's house. That's cool. <laughs> For sure. Katie saw a point on a map that was like off the end of a peninsula. And then we had a discussion about what is a cape? <laughs> we had a cape or a and peninsula. The other day I was just sitting there wondering, uh, islands have peninsulas? Yeah. And that felt really weird to sit there and think about that for a while. We always get into these discussions about geography uh -huh. and stuff. So we came to this little point because it's like, it's a little point that looked kind of interesting because we like little points. To get there, you have to drive across the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> and then down like this narrow it, road. It is super windy and there's just two guys out there. Golfing but... in this wind, it's insane. I don't know how you could even bother because like the wall, you think, would just fly off and land in Ireland or something and then you have to get out like a car and you have to walk down this like footpath and we started noticing the terrain was the very first thing that's like these lumpy chunks of grass and the way that this rock just sticks up out of the ground and it just looks extremely picturesque yeah and then this happened <laughs> there's a tower and we were like okay we're going to the tower so we walked out across like the grass area and stuff and we're gonna see if maybe we can find out a little bit about this tower but i was mentioning to katie how cool it is to just find these things when we're not on a tour or anything you just are like, driving around exploring and you come across them and it's just like incredibly exciting somebody's gonna hit this tower with a golf ball yeah absolutely <laughs> You can go in it. I don't know if you're supposed to, but Katie just went in it and she has vanished. This seems insanely dangerous. Katie? Yes? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm a little scared though. Oh my God, dude, no way. Even if you go to the top, you can't see over. <laughs> but I climbed a tower today. <laughs> I don't even think we can see you. Let me see if I can zoom. This doesn't even make sense. Oh yeah, there we go. We can see your hand now. Yeah. Yikes. I'm coming back down. I'm coming up. Let me down. <laughs> so long. So long. <laughs> he was like, maybe I should hold the camera because you're going to need both hands. But I'm not sure why because there's no rail. Oh my God, it's really narrow too. Yep. This is terrifying. Was down worse than up? Uh, yeah. We are probably not supposed to be doing this. This does. <laughs> Whoa. It just starts feeling weird. Whoa. And then you realize how full your bladder is. <laughs> you said, I, I'm not gonna be able to see at the top? You might be, you might be tall enough. I don't think I was tall enough. How, did you go all the way to the top? I did not go all the way to the top. Yeah, dude, no way. Yeah, you get right there, Holy and then you realize there's no use. Yeah, this is... It gets more narrow. Terrifying. Yeah, and this, the stairs are even more narrow. Holy smokes. Yeah. Okay, I'm assuming that back in the day they had some sort of handrail or something? Because this... How would this be possible to... Like, Maybe run up... people just had bigger balls. The yeah. balls have shrunk. We got down nuts. Did you turn around and walk down forward? Yes. Holy crap. <laughs> this is worse than that thing in, in, in Egypt, man. Yeah, that's true. I'll Holy agree. crap. <laughs> it looks really cool, though. <laughs> Be careful. Some Steve Zizu stuff going on. <laughs> it's just not aquatic.
There's really no documentation around the tower that explains when it was built or exactly what it was for, but I'm gonna say it's old. <laughs> and I'm assuming that it was probably built to, you know, just defend from sea invasions and stuff, like a lookout point of some sort. That's uh, a pretty epic find and really interesting that it doesn't seem to be that like important. Like not like a bunch of tourists on a bus here. It's just us. I wonder, uh, wonder, what, wonder what lives in there. <laughs> Not about to stick my hand in there though. There's like honey badgers and stuff in the part of the world aren't there. Honey badger don't give a shit. <laughs> We're headed back to the car a different way than we came out. And it is like kind of through a maze of little spiky bushes that are spiky enough that they're going through like my, my pants, like it's, it's poking me in the legs. And uh, if, you think we're gonna find the car or? I can see the car, I just can't get to the car. <laughs> we have driven way out into like the countryside in the center of the island down along a ravine with this wonderful little curvy road that's like super fun to drive. Even if you're not in an amazing car, it's still a wonderful experience. And we've popped out on the top of the hill with this incredible view looking over this valley. And it's still windy. <laughs> Since we were in Sweden, we've been obsessed with fika. We've been doing fika like every day. So we've got some uh, <laughs> non-authentic fika that we're gonna enjoy in the car with a view over this wonderful little valley. And uh, I have something to share with you fika wise. So let's hop up in there and get that going on. We finally did get some food earlier. We were in a little town. Do you know the name of the little town? It was New C Castle something. Wonderful little town where we had lunch. Oh, Castle Town. Castle. <laughs> it's really called Castle Town. And you're like saying New Castle. Yeah, like, I was like, what? what? What's it called? And it was like, we had probably the best pizza I've ever had. It's like in the top five. Yeah, yeah, definitely Wonderfully top five. good pizza. And I told the guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was like these Italian people who were like, they were like literally Italian people like speaking Italian and whatnot. And like an old dude swim, swim like flinging some pizza and it was like top notch stuff. So that yeah, has been a very days. like high level, like pip, pip chip type of like you know like experience <laughs> is that and, is that what that means like <laughs> it's like like, like you know stuffy <laughs> like you're, you know you done you done your tie up to nine or whatever the word is and uh <laughs> yeah, so to, to top that off for our for our fika um i have gotten something that is this is so anti-fika it really is. It, it, it it's is. just sweets at daytime. It, it, here's the beverage. Yeah, what does it say? Bulldog power. <laughs> <laughs> but I went with the... Uh, this is this is made in the EU. This is made in England. Is, is it in England or in the EU? It says uh, it's a product of the EU and that it's from England. England, okay. Green, so it's, Greenford, it's, it's, England. So it's an import, man. Yeah. It's foreign food. And I got some, uh, I got some fruity, fruit, fruit, fruit. Fruity coconut mushrooms. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and those are also uh, from the UK, and that's why I got them. I was like, oh, I don't want to get something that's like from Germany or whatever. At least a little bit closer to the to where we're at. And it's funny because Katie was like Jones and coconut, and I didn't know. And she went and bought got some coconut. What are they called? Crumbles or something like that. It's a. Uh... Miss Cribbles. Miss Cribbles. Oh, it was with the apostrophe S that we were talking about oh, earlier. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I was trying. Ma Where's it's Surrey? A, it's a macar mac mac macaroon. Macaroon. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I am a gummy fiend. I really like gummy, and these are little mushrooms, like literally little mushrooms. Look at that guy. Boop. <laughs> and it's oh. got coconut on it which is not something you normally see like a gummy coconut when you come we gotta go yellow okay what are we gonna do this to to toad to toad like the, the, the character yeah okay. his head's really a mushroom yeah. <laughs> wow a pretty good ma'am mm. that's a decadent gummy that's like really really good Maybe we should mail these to Jeff. We have a friend who really... We, we mail them Gumi from all over the world. Maybe this should be what we send yep. them. Oh my gosh. This is really good. The coconut really complements it. And there's like a fruit flavor that's like underneath there. And it's not gummy in the way that like it's chewy. No. It, it crumbles almost. Oh. Is the... Is the... Wash that down with some bulldog, Jonah. <laughs> bulldog power. 
Okay, yeah, so the bottom part is like, um, I don't even know how to really explain that. Like an it's, eraser. Uh, yeah, it's like, what are those things called? Cowtails? It's like the cream inside of a cowtail. Yeah, but it's not that sweet. Correct. It's like they almost really did want to mimic the texture that you'd have with a mushroom. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. I'm blown away. Should we even eat the crumbles? <laughs> I don't know if that's needed, man. I'm going to just stuff my face with these things. I really want the crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some. You want half? Yeah. You want this? I did not expect it to be soft. Mm. Have you never had these before? Mm -mm. Oh, really? Well, my mom had those all the time when I was a kid. This is pretty good. It's just got, like, you know, it's just coconut. A lot of coconut. If you don't like coconut, you'd hate it. But... Yeah, chocolate and coconut. Yeah, it's I good. was in a coconut mood. That hit the spot. I have a lot of, oddly, a lot of coconut in the car. Mm. <laughs> in Bulldog Jizz or whatever you call it. Bulldog, no, Bulldog power. power. Oh, my bad. Ugh, terrible. I don't really like energy drinks so much. But I like Garana. It's weird. Why do you always try them? Yeah, it's fun. Mm, give it a try. Dude, have you seen the clouds? Mm. Look at that. This is crazy. Sitting on a mountain, inside a cloud, eating some mushrooms and coconut. <laughs> In the middle of Isle of Man. Batteries on my phone is dying. We might have enough fuel to get back. We might have enough fuel to get back. <laughs> I don't care. Can you get the shot? <laughs> We have cruised all the way to the most northern point. Is this and as far I'm north sure as we can go? This is the most northern point, point of Ayer. It is a deserted beach right now because season. And also, this is not like the best beach. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's just rocks. I don't think people yeah. are coming to this one. You, it's got a pretty huge rock bed that you have to walk across to get down from where you can park the car down to the water. And the rocks start off like big, like really big. And as you get closer and closer and closer, they get smaller and smaller and smaller as I'm assuming they've had more time to be in the water. Something we noticed last night is that this island's tides, maybe it's the time of year or the, or the time of month that it is, or maybe it has something to do with else, something else about the island, but the tides are like, they go a long way between high tide and low tide. And you can kind of see that here where the tide goes way, way, way up and a lot of this beach will disappear. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming we're at low tide right now because, you know, it's the lower part and we're standing where I think we should be underwater. Yeah. <laughs> But it's cool to see the erosion and stuff effects on the rocks as you walk down across the beach. Yeah, probably one of my favorite beaches to have looked at. They're yeah, just like saucer ball, saucer, saucer, <laughs> saucer, what's a saucer ball? Saucer balls. <laughs> yeah. okay, they just have saucer sized balls. rocks and we'll call those saucer balls. <laughs> We gotta walk over the saucer balls. You mean like a car. saucer, like a milk saucer, like a like a plate, like a, like a saucer that goes under, uh, uh, under a cup. Yeah. You've been drinking too much tea. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> saucer ball. I just discovered something that is, I don't know if annoying is the right word, but uh, surprising. We've been having a little bit of trouble with our credit cards where we go to let them process and every once in a while they just get declined. And I think it just has something to do with the system of the place that we're at, not liking our American cards and stuff. It's not a really huge deal or anything because it usually works. But because of that, we wanna make sure that we're carrying some cash on us, even though this is very much as England was a everybody uses a card society. Um, so we hit an ATM here on the island and just before, I think I need to back up a little bit and explain that Isle of Man is its own country in 90% of the way. Um, it, is, it is its own governance, it has its own government and everything, but there's a lot of pieces of it that are tied to England. And like, for instance, people here have Isle of Man passports that I think are issued by the British government and stuff. So they kind of have British citizenship, but they don't have all the same like rights and stuff. And even though um, England was part of the UK, uh, the rest of the UK, I'm sorry, was part of the EU, and I know they're leaving, but they were part of the EU, this never was. So there's all these little like weird works and 
when we came here, we had British pounds, like this guy right here. And if we needed to use cash, we just gave people British pounds. It was no big deal. Like nobody blinks at it. And everything here is labeled like with pounds in the way that it's, you know, when you buy something off the shelf or whatever, it's not dollar signs, it's pounds. So we went to an ATM to get some cash because we had been worried about our uh, cards not, you know, we get an even meal or something and you don't have any money and your credit card doesn't work then you look like an idiot. So we just got some cash out and we were like, okay, we'll get enough out because we're going to Scotland next and we might be in England a little bit between so we'll just get out a bunch of money and we plan to just we'll just have like emergency money and spend it if they you know it comes up or whatever i just looked at the money for the first time <laughs> and it is isle of man dollars <laughs> so what we've got here is something that i don't think they're going to let me use anywhere but here so what really makes me like wonder about this is why are they going to the trouble of pressing this because it's locked to the british pound because when we gave them british pounds it was five british pounds i handed them five british pounds they handed me back you know what i mean like that's exactly what it costs so this equals 20 british pounds but it just says isle of man government on it so now we're going to start doing nothing but spending cash because we got to get rid of this before we get off this island You remember that? Uh, you remember that tower we climbed yesterday? Yeah, scary tower. <laughs> I googled it because I needed to find the name of it as I was posting about it on Instagram. Uh huh. And it is a Wikipedia article that says that it was built in 1823, I think. Wow. So it's not well. I mean, we I thought it was going to be like medieval, right? But it really isn't that old on way the grand just, scheme of things. Wait, wait, just decide that the, the 1800s is not impressive. It's, I mean, but I thought it was like something from like you know like like vikings built it or something you know but it was just like a dude that was building it as a landmark in the same like um style as a tower that someplace else on the island but it was still a good find man that guy's efforts <laughs> you're no viking <laughs> we're gonna go drive the tt now yeah <laughs> beep, beep. all right the isle of man tt this is the biggest event on the Isle of Man every year. And what it is, is it is essentially a motorcycle race that they have built into the normal road system around the kind of the central part of the island. And one lap around this track is... Katie did a lot of studying while we were driving along. 37 and 3 fourths kilo miles. Miles, miles. right? And they are on motorcycles averaging out a speed of 130 miles per hour and topping out at 206 miles per hour which having just but that's the highest speed not everybody's hitting that yeah just having just driven around this course is completely mad yeah there, we, this... we averaged 30 miles an hour <laughs> yeah so we drove the course we went around it one time and it took us just over an hour and of course we were going essentially the speed limit the entire time but you're going through little villages and stuff and going along these brick walls and it gets really narrow sometimes and it gets wide and straight and like you can feel the areas where they're just opening the throttle and going 200 miles an hour straight through these areas and stuff it's hard to envision this like I'm going 50 miles an hour in this car, and I was like, I feel like I'm going a little too fast. Like, this doesn't feel safe. <laughs> there's moments in the road where there's bumps and stuff, and they hit these bumps and they jump. Yeah, I and was not looking at the road. I was looking down to make sure that we were on the right track, and because uh, <laughs> there's so many tracks, that we were on the right path. Yeah. And um, we hit a bump, and I just, my heart flew out of my my chest. And if you didn't, you had to have studied it, because if, if you didn't know that bump was there, and you were going more than 50 miles an hour, you would die yeah so it's it, it just i can't find exactly all the words that are necessary to explain exactly what it felt like did we hit all the stats 200 miles an hour y'all it's car, you're going 200 miles an hour we did not hit all the stats okay what other stats okay so we, we only did one lap yeah. uh, for the race they usually do six laps and their times uh, land around an hour and 45 minutes so <laughs> they're going like five times as fast as we yes. went yes yeah yeah 
and they've been doing the race for they, this is a, this is the 98th race they they have right that they're doing this year. Well, that's a really good point. I actually don't know if the one that they just recently did uh, or not know that for last year was the 98th or if the one coming up was the 98th. But okay. the 100th is coming soon. <laughs> yeah, because they started they started in 1907, but they missed a year or two somewhere in there. Yeah. So it's been going for quite some time, and it's um. They've, there was a movie that we saw recently like that they made a documentary about called Closer to the Edge, I think. Yeah. And it'll show you like more in depth what this situation is and it's incredible. I remember being very impressed by the movie and I'm excited to watch it again now yeah. that we've driven around this course and just kind of to know like what it looks like. Oh, I remember that. And oh. you, the, the scenery changes and stuff as you go along is just incredible the too. Yeah, the weather so changes. Beautiful. Yeah, and the weather the shifting with all the clouds in and, and everything. coming in and going out and seeing the sea and seeing the sunshine. It and was a perfect day for racing! <laughs> <laughs> we kept mentioning how this isn't a track that is designed for the race. It's a race that happens on this track. And it's not like, you know, sometimes they have like Indy races or they have like NASCAR races or whatever. And the tracks are like, you know, crafted for the vehicles. This is just a place that somebody was like, man, that was a good loop on my motorbike. I should bring my buddies here. And now they go around at 200 miles an hour. Yep. <laughs> it's nice to think that it started from that. Because like some of the corners and stuff, there's a hairpin turn that's like completely 180 degree turn. Like you, you, it's, yep. you know, it's going up a hill and you just completely crank around. It's really sharp. It's impossible not to think about the race and not to, in a way, just hold your breath yeah. until the turn is over. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to come and see this race, like, firsthand, like, to be here, but apparently it gets a little crowded. Yeah. I can understand why. We're standing, we're sitting right now outside of the grandstands that they leave here year round. So there's permanent structures built up around the race course. That's oh, how big of a deal oh, it is. The, the hairpin turn, you can't see my hand. Leave oh. the, yeah, leave the camera. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you can see it on the map behind us, yeah. which is really oh, cool too. Sorry, I cut you off. So we're at the grandstands, right? right? Yeah. Like start, finish but line. But like I think there's permanent structures and stuff yeah. that are just built into this, this track. And it's just like, it's a big part of the island, I think at this point. Like it's a yep. defining feature of the entire island. Yeah, it's not just this moment in time. They take a lot of their culture and a lot of their pride in it. Yeah. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, very cool. Mm. We're driving away from the start line of the TT, heading towards Port Aaron. So we're going south today again. And we just came around one of the curves, which before we were paying attention to the track, but I actually looked up from the track and the most scary thing in the world was sitting on the side of the road. This is the most terrifying graveyard I've seen in a long time. It just looks uber creepy. And we're gonna go in there, because why not? Katie said this is creepy, and I think it is got, you get a little bit of the willies, but I don't consider it super creepy. I think it's really, really picturesque looking. And maybe the creepiness that is coming out of it for me is that it's quite crowded in this graveyard. It's really crowded. Just this one headstone has four names on it. Yeah, they, they're really, really, really bunched in together. And you can go inside the, the church that sits in the middle of everything. And it's actually a functioning modern church. Like the inside of it still like, they, it's like they still use it every week. And inside of it, aside from like your normal church stuff, is some artifacts and stuff. They've got some crosses and things that are old gravestones and old religious symbols from like the ninth century. Yeah, it said that there's been a church on the site since the ninth century. Yeah, and I don't think that the structure that's here now is quite that old. I think it's it was built something in the 1800s yeah. or something. Yeah, during like really not important times was as that, we found oh out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's not important. Yeah, it's not impressive. But there's something from the ninth century inside. That's old, man. But um, I noticed as well that they said that the tower on this church was the oldest one. And I've seen that has been sort of a thing that the towers tower are the oldest parts of each one of the churches. It's almost like uh, the only thing that was built previously was the tower and it was there and they found it and they kept it not in shambles and then they built around it my for a lot of them. My theory is that the towers have always been made of stone and maybe the rest of the structure wasn't made of stone so uh, they had to rebuild them. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm oh, not there sure. was almost an accident. I think there might have been a car accident. So this is about to get more crowded up in here. Yeah. Okay, so there wasn't a car accident, but somebody was trying to turn and another person didn't realize that and it was a close call. Anywho, everybody's safe and sound here near the, 
the cemetery. We went inside the church and other than, you know, just a peaceful little kind of moldy place, uh, we found some weird marmalade. Somebody is selling their marmalade and on it, it says 2016, but somebody scratched out the six and wrote seven on it. I'm not buying that marmalade. <laughs> it's at the, the creepiest graveyard church I've ever seen inside and people are scratch. I don't want to die. I don't want to end up here. And I think that's what that marmalade is going to do to people. On the way out of the graveyard, Katie noticed a little plaque that had the most recent date that we had seen on anything in there, because most of those bodies have been there for a while. And the plaque was a, um, not a headstone exactly, just like a memorial type of plaque. Mm. And it had listed the year 2004 on it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's got the name of a French guy on there, and it also mentions the, the TT race. And we were like, I wonder if that is like, you know, because somebody died here in the TT race. Mm -hmm. And we looked it up, and yeah, it turns out they died not only during the TT race, but they died like here, like somewhere in this like little vicinity. Yeah, in this little stretch of the race course. Right here, yeah. It's a bit freaky. Yeah, it's definitely a bit freaky. And at the same time, like, I didn't want to sit here and mention deaths because I feel like some people are just, they spit out numbers and stuff. Yeah. But three people died that year from the TT from the race. race. Yeah. <sighs> Dude. And it, it's, it's, you take your life in your hands and it's like a weird showmanship thing at the same time. Like, you were saying earlier that these people have to be insane, but they mm. also have to be so grounded in what's really possible for... Yeah, if you're completely insane, you're going to wreck your bike instantly. Yeah. But you also kind of have to be insane to do it at all. Yeah. So you have to be just the right amount of insane to, like, get involved with this. Especially knowing that people are dying. Mm. Like, it's no joke, man. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck A roads. B roads is where it's at. All we've been doing is just trying to avoid A roads and enjoying the B roads. And they have given us so much. Just every few minutes, like, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at that. And then we just pulled off on the side of this uh, B road to look at this reservoir. And I'm kind of stunned. We got the reservoir, beautiful water. Then you've got these trees that I haven't seen anywhere else on the island. These like evergreen looking new world. <laughs> It's just another dimension of the island that I didn't know was there. And then in the background, you can see this beautiful kind of purpley red color. This is the Isle of Man color. It's going to be my color for this island. And it's just covering this entire mountain that's hanging out in the background. Is that Sneefell? Could it be? It might be. Is it what? It, Sneefell is the biggest <laughs> mountain on the island. I was like, what? <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is an, it's an insult. Um, yeah. Ugh, just gorgeous. The colors and the adventure. Having driven out into this part of the island has actually been quite wonderful because we're getting to see all these greens. Yesterday when we were up on the northern part of the island, we went up into these mountains and I think we were in that purpley area, but when you're up there, it's not so purple as much as it is like kind of like a brownish color and stuff. And it is remarkable looking, but I was like, well, I guess it's the time of year we're going to miss out on seeing like a super green Isle of Man. But I guess if you just go to different areas, you get to see different things because there's no shortage of green where we're standing here. Like everybody in the world, I think when I'm hungry and somebody tells me I'm gonna have to wait 15 minutes for something, I get cranky. And then I just walk away. The guy told us to go out to the boardwalk, so I was like, I'm a frickin' boardwalk, I'm hungry. <laughs> so we walked out to the boardwalk, which is down here. And uh, then I realized what we could see across the water is where we were yesterday and we climbed the tower. And you can see it from here. Uh, currently we're at Port St. Mary's and uh, it's just kind of a snoozy little town kind of feels like. I call it a snoozy little town right on the coast and the view is pretty amazing of this lovely little port city and our accomplishments from earlier. <laughs> I'm no longer cranky. <laughs> I just read a Wikipedia article for 
Lochten, which is a sheep that they farm here on two farms on the island. It's not a very populous breed of sheep. There are only 1,500 frisky females out there. They're very cool looking because they come with four to six horns. It's kind of like a shamrock. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're out there looking for the four leaf clover. Sometimes you'll find this six, six horned Is it six tan. horns? I thought it was no, four. No, it's four, usually yeah. four, but sometimes you get a that Sixer. happens sometimes. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So very cool kind of sheep and we're hoping to see one in person but we'd have to figure out where those farms are I think. Anywho, when I was reading through the Wikipedia I came across the word endangered and not not populous and things like that but they put it on my plate. <laughs> I'm not going to tell him no. I assume that if it's on the plate, that means they've got enough to do their duty. <laughs> and I get to enjoy that animal. Yeah, so I'm going to now. Here we go! The little cafe that we're at is kind of famous on the island for being regarded as one of the best places to eat. And it looks to me like they made that bread. Do you think that's true? Whoever made that bread made that bread good. I don't know if it's necessarily made here or in a bakery in town. That is some of the best meat I've ever had. Wikipedia also used the word delicacy. You, you have to eat this. I'm, I'm, I'm no joke. Like, just bite. Let's see if we can get the right... Oh, okay. Can, you, can we do this thing? Bring it in. Do it. Give it a moment. Chew it up. It's the lingering taste that it leaves in your mouth that is good. Oh my gosh. Dude. Yeah, it's definitely, it's not dry. And I think the seasoning that they put in it really just makes the meat a blessing. I, think, <laughs> I don't know how to explain. I think I know why that thing's endangered. Because <laughs> people were like, dang, son. Cook it up! <laughs> yeah, that's really, really good. Yeah. And what about your lunch? I have got a piece of toast with some cheese on it, which seems unremarkable. But what is good about this is that they are using Manx cheese. So Manx being um, Isle of Man cheese. I'm not clear on what animal this came from, but uh, let's see. Katie's got me all screwed up with forks and stuff now. I don't know how to cut. Am I doing this wrong? I'm doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> the dude that works here was like, this is really good, you should get this. So, alright. And what is this called? Do you remember? I do not remember. It's um, called a rare bit. Oh, a rare bit. Yeah? Rare, yeah? yeah? Is that what you said? A rare bit? Yeah. Alright, I'll have a rare bit. A rare bit of cheese in my mouth. <laughs> the cheese has a lot of flavor. It's a very strong flavor. It's a very good flavor. It's mature cheddar. Mature cheddar. Oh, dude. Mm. This place isn't screwing around. We just kind of stumbled upon it a little bit. Katie found it online that they had had this, this, uh, this, <laughs> this rare sheep. That's why we ended up over here. And I think it was a really good decision. Whoa. This is the kind of stuff that, like, this is the kind of restaurant you want to find. Like, this place is, like, they, they're into what they're doing, and they're doing things that are interesting, and they're doing things you can't get anyplace else, and it's actually not that expensive either. Mine was, like, six pounds or something, and I think Katie's was 12, but to eat an endangered species? Pretty good. Seriously? What? This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What? Seriously? I, I'm, I'm stunned. And then listening to you as we were coming down the road, you were just like, really? I don't, even, I don't remember what you said specifically, but your astonishment was, yeah, this so is some Isle of Man we're stuff. We're kind of at the southern point of the island, right? Yeah, this is the most southern that you can get without leaving the island to go to, like, toe of island. What is this other little island behind us called? It's a calf of man. Calf and of a cute man. little story is that yeah. <laughs> in 2001 they had foot and mouth disease or something like that and they had to usher a whole bunch of the lock tan sheep over there to keep them away from us people. So that and they would continue to survive. Yeah so they protected them on that little island and they survived and they were able to continue exporting like meat and products from the sheep and letting that uh, industry subsist. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> This 
nearly impossible to dodge all that sheep shit. <laughs> Not only is this an amazing view and just a fun adventure drive down to the southern point of the island island, and there are seals out there. <laughs> And they seem to be a little bit separated, maybe intentionally from the people, but just across this little tiny area, there's just a big, like, I don't know, what's a bunch of seals called? I don't know, a pod? A squiggle. A squiggle. Definitely a squiggle. A squiggle. a squiggle of mammal sausage. You've been calling them mammal sausages. Yeah, they're, they're mammal sausage. They just stuffed a whole bunch of guts into a, some sort of, like, sheath. And then that sheath started walking around. <laughs> I called you a mammal sausage and you're like, but I got arms and legs. Exactly, I'm not a sausage. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bunch of seals over there and you can hear them actually making some noise. Like they're like, Mrr. and then you like look around a little more and you find more and more and more and they're in the water. Like I was like, oh, they're playing, but probably fighting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. There's like, there's, there's seals there. It's really amazing. You smell really good. You smell pretty good too. Not so much like a sausage. <laughs> Nor like a seal. <laughs> a cool tidbit about Isle of Man is that there are public walking paths everywhere. And I mean, I'm not saying you can like walk through everybody's yard or whatever, but it seems like that there's not that much restriction on where you're allowed to just walk. And we found another place in like, the, just amazing looking. And it seems endless that you could have all these like areas to go hiking and go just on strolls and find wonderfully amazing things like another one of these guys. And let's go inside. This one is a little bit newer. It was still built in the 1800s and it was like a monument to a dude. So it wasn't like some sort of like old school like fort or anything like that. And there's actually a place here on the sign that says that a award-winning photo was taken a hundred yards that direction. And maybe in a minute I'll try to figure that out. But for the time being, we're gonna go in and I think, I don't know where Katie went already. This is a bit creepy. There's only one way to go, it's up. Well, there's a dungeon down here. Oh Lord, that is just ridiculously scary looking. All right, up we go. And this one is way, way less freaky because, oh, okay, it's really dark. But there's at least like a rail and I have something on the side of me, like on the right, so it doesn't feel like I'm gonna die. This feels infinitely safer. Another dungeon door. Ooh, that's pretty spooky, y'all. Probably gonna speed this up. That's impressive. Yeah. Not as scary as the other one we climbed where you only go about three fourths up and you go, no, I'm going back down. This one you can go all the way. This is way less scary, but my bladder is just as full as last time. <laughs> what are you gonna do, dude? There's no toilet in the dungeon. There's no toilet. You just gotta be an adult about this. Hold it. <laughs> Did I tell you that's what I said to the late at one of the ladies in St. Paul's Cathedral? Because no. I had walked around for a little bit and I didn't see a bathroom, so I just went up to one of the ladies that was handing out flyers for the the ceremony or the orchestra thing or whatever. And I was like, where's the bathroom? She was like, it's like a five minute walk away. And I looked at her and I was like, I think I'm just gonna be an adult about it and hold it. <laughs> and we both just left. We kind of realized that we don't know how far 100 yards is. Like, we kind of guessed. I think this is about where the picture that was prize winning was taken from. And then we looked it up on the internet to see if we could find a copy of the picture to see, oh, are we standing from the right perspective? And it just doesn't exist. <laughs> I, I saw a sketch from like 1880 and I was like, ah, oh, maybe that's the one. <laughs> and it was just like the charcoal sketch. <laughs> that's what I thought photography was back then. <laughs> but anywho, I think that it's just saying uh, the picture was of this building from a hundred uh, yards that way. It said towards the north, so I, I mean, are we a hundred yards from it? I think? Yeah, yeah, this is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
know who it is. It's your boy, Bala Man. <laughs> we got us a bag of crazy beans and a pretty good place to park to watch the sun go down. We got a tip that if you come to a place called Nyarval, that there's nothing here, and that's true. And the benefit of that is that at nighttime you can see the stars. So we went down this road that was kind of insane. That the walls of this grass was like super, super, super high. It was like when you see like pictures of buses going through super deep snow. Only it was like the walls of the road, like the walls of the world, like it was earth. And it was just, it was way taller than the car. So we cruised down this like amazing little narrow road where the whole time I was just like, what if another car comes? Cause like there were no pull-offs at all. It was just like grass. It's like, you're talking like miles of reversing if two cars meet. Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up on the coast and we got a wonderful view of the stars. And video of stars doesn't work very well, not with our equipment. So what I did is I took a long exposure photograph and this came out fairly nice. Yeah. I, I'd like to make one better one time with like maybe the stars better in focus, but I'm learning. <laughs> it was really good. I don't put gas in cars often, but I find it a little odd that here, the way that it works is you go up to the pump, you just take the pump out of the machine, they take, take the like nozzle out of the pump, stick it in your car and fill it with fuel. And there's no like swiping of a credit card that has to take place beforehand. You don't have to go inside and give them like a deposit so that they can make sure you drive off. They just put up a sign that's like, if you, if you steal from us, we're gonna have to contact the police. <laughs> but I guess like, if you're gonna commit a crime on this little island, it's gonna be easy to find you. Like they probably have cameras pointing at the cars and license plates and whatnot. It's just still like, it just still feels a little bit like honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> Try to keep the, the, the sun <laughs> from the hitting chat. the okay. Yeah, because then otherwise, boo! <laughs> Oh, where we're going? Am I in the shot? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's weird. It just feels like two people watching me now. <laughs> Come on, man. I know, but that looks like a dead body. We hope you enjoyed our first video from Isle of Man. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more videos about the island on their way soon. As always, thanks to our Patreons. If you'd like to help make more videos like this happen, have a look at our Patreon page linked below. This is really big grains of sand.